Praise God. Well, what a Sunday. What a Sunday. Listen, uh, I want to jump straight in. Uh, we're going to do baptisms at the end of the service, so don't rush off. Uh, and before I start preaching, I do want to say and repeat what uh, all the regional pastors and service leaders said today. Uh, don't miss Victory Conference. Yeah. Okay, it's for everybody in our whole church. Uh, don't make an excuse. Don't skip a session. Don't plan something else. Cancel your plans. Uh, text your friends and tell them, I changed my mind. I don't love you as much as I love this conference. I'm coming to this conference. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the vision of this house, unpacking our, our church values. Uh, we've got Justin Reimer, Ken Lee coming. Uh, it's going to be absolutely incredible. I know you are going to be so blessed and I don't want you to miss the blessing. There's nothing like being there in the room, experiencing it. And I believe that God is going to do a fresh thing inside of our hearts. Can you say amen? amen. So we've purposely done this like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so that everyone can be involved. Uh, there's no connect group that night. All our connect groups are arriving at the conference. That's why there's no connect group Saturday. So if you're working, it's on the weekend, so you can make it. And it's not just Sunday morning. In the afternoon, we have more. And if you're not registered, you don't get to come in, okay? So make sure that you, <laughs> you get to come to church, but you don't get to to come to the afternoon. Uh, so don't miss it. Make sure that you sign up today. This is your last moment, your last chance, and I think it's going to be a great blessing in your life. Everyone say yes. yes. All right, here we go. Uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. We've been in a series called All In, and uh, I want to continue this today. I'm going to talk to you about the person that God is looking for, the kind of person that God is looking for. Uh, Mark 12, 28 to 30 says, one of the teachers of religious law was standing there and he asked Jesus of all the commandments, which is the most important. And Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. Everybody said, amen. Everyone said, amen. That's what we say. Okay, let's try it again. The Lord our God is the one and only God. Everybody said, amen. Amen. That just shows how many of you were texting instead of listening to the Bible. All right, everyone, eyes on the screen. Here we go. And you must love the Lord your God with all your... Uh, now you're with me. All right. With all your... <laughs> with all your... And all your... That's right. That's why we don't text in church. All right. We must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Everybody shout all in. Now, uh, let, me, let me read you a story from the Old Testament that I think illustrates this, and then I want to jump in. Look uh, with me at 2 Chronicles chapter 16. If you've got your Bible uh, or an app on your phone, get it out. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. And we're going to read a few verses here. The Bible says, in the 36th year of King Asa's reign, King Basha of Israel invaded Judah. So Asa is the king of Judah. And, and the king of Israel invaded Judah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asa's territory. And Asa responded, listen, by removing the silver and gold from the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace, and he sent it to King Ben-Hadad of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus, along with this message. Let there be a treaty between you and me, like the one between your father and my father. See, I'm sending you silver and gold. Break your treaty with King Basha of Israel so that he'll leave me alone. So uh, the invaders come into Judah from Israel, and immediately he responds. He sends money to the king of Aram and says, look, I want to hire you. I want to pay you off so that you will help me. I don't know what to do, and I need backup. That army's bigger, stronger. Uh, we're in a, in a tight situation, and so I want to actually get some help to get through this situation. Now, I, I'm going to jump down to verse 7. At that time, uh, Hanani the seer came to King Asa and told him, because you put your trust in the king of Aram, so this is the prophet, right, comes, because you put your trust in the king of Aram instead of in the Lord your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army of the king of Aram. Don't you remember what happened to the Ethiopians and Libyans and their vast army with all of their chariots and charioteers? At that time, you relied on the Lord, and he handed them over to you. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What a fool you've been. From now on, you will be at war. And so he, he calls Asa back and says, remember the last time you were invaded, you called on God, he delivered you, but this time you responded a different way. And he says, Asa, listen, don't you know the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed 
to him. Everybody say all in. Jesus' call is to follow him completely, to go all the way with God. Today, people are being baptized. It is an outward sign of what is already in your heart that, Jesus, I am following you. I'm living a new kind of life. I've left my old life behind, and I am completely coming after Jesus. Everyone say amen. Amen. This is it. Some things are meant to be all or nothing, and Jesus' call is an all or nothing call. You don't halfway follow Jesus. Some things you just can't do halfway. How many of you know halfway diets don't work? Right? I die. Some of you are like, oh, I just have a cheat day. Yeah, but some of us have a cheat life. Like it's like every day is a cheat day. That doesn't work. Uh, I've seen people on a diet and their salad is like so big. There's so much salad dress. I think you actually gain more weight from the salad than if you just ate normal food. I, I can't go halfway. I got to go all way. I don't want to get on an airplane and hear the pilot come over the loudspeaker and say, listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, proceeding to you know, take off to Tokyo, and uh, the good news is our, our captain is halfway through his training, and everything should be okay. No, no, no. I need a pilot that is all the way trained. <laughs> I need, I need someone that all the way knows what they're doing. I, I can't have it in between. I, I need it all or nothing. Yeah. That, that's what happened with James and Jasmine. She's like, James, you're cute and everything, but we gotta, this needs to be a, a legit thing. You've got to buy me a ring. You've got to make this real. It's all or nothing. I'm waiting for James to say amen. All right. You, you know, God doesn't respond to us part way. He forgives us completely. He accepts us completely. He fills us completely. Are you with me? He restores completely. And you and I are not people with a religion or with just a belief. We are people who have gone all in with Jesus. All the way with him. We talked about this, you know, at the beginning of the year and and through these series. I want to remind you, what is the vision of our church? That we would connect with God's purpose and change our world. But the way we connect with God's purpose is when I understand it and God reveals it, I go all in with his purpose. I I go all in and I respond to the purposes of God inside my life. God is looking for a certain type of person, the kind of person who gives their whole heart and focus to him. And you and I shouldn't be torn between two opinions. We shouldn't be caught up in the things of this world. In fact, the Lord is looking for people who understand kingdom priority. And if we would respond to him, the Bible says he's ready to strengthen us and to show up in our lives. I don't know if you've ever prayed, God, I need you to move in my life. God, where are you? I need need more of your presence. I need a breakthrough right now. Can I tell you right now that you don't have to try to get God on your side. There is a certain type of person that God always responds to, and I want to talk about it today. Because God gives us a call, and he expects us to respond, but remember that call is to enter his kingdom. His kingdom. Kingdoms and citizenships are all or nothing. You either are or you are not. You either have the right to be a citizen of the nation or you don't. You have the passport or you don't. It is all or nothing. And we use phrases like that. Jesus, you're the king of kings. You're you're the Lord of lords. But Jesus actually taught extensively about the kingdom of God and, and explained us entering into God's purpose and call as coming into his kingdom. In other words, his rulership, his authority, the realm where where he has the say, the realm where he is in charge, where his will is done. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, that we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. In other words, you've got another passport. You have a spiritual passport that makes you a citizen of God's kingdom in heaven. We belong in that kingdom. And, and so I either am or I am not. And what is that kingdom? Well, that kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. That kingdom has unique values and priorities. That kingdom has an eternal king that rules over it, who, who has a, a purpose and, and a will and an opinion and a way. This kingdom that God calls us to is now and also not yet. It, right now, God's kingdom can come in my life. But there is coming a time when the king is going to return and he will rule over everything and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
But you and I have an opportunity right now to make that decision now. I'm not waiting for them to bow my knee. I bow my knee now. I give God my life now. There will be a time that everyone will see who is actually on the throne, but you and I have had our eyes open and we say, God, you are on the throne, and so I want to be all in your kingdom. We have passed from death to life and entered into his heavenly kingdom. And that's why we offer our hearts freely to him and live our lives on this earth as citizens of heaven and representatives of God's kingdom. Are you with me today? And so what does that mean? Well, when I understand that he's calling me in the kingdom, there's this call to come in. God, God is, is constantly working out his will and purpose on earth. Then I start to understand God is looking for certain kind of people that would respond in the right way to his rulership and authority. Anyone can come into the kingdom. Today, it's open. If you're, if you're new here, if you're not really familiar with church, with Jesus, with what all this is, I have good news for you. God's kingdom is open to you. Heaven is open to you. God's heart is open to you. If there was a time you served God and, and you feel like, man, I kind of messed up along the way and I'm so far from him. No, no, I have good news for you. God's heart is open to you today. Anyone can come through faith in Jesus. And if you would put your faith in him, God receives and accepts us no matter who we are. Somebody say amen. amen. But God responds to certain type of people. He's open to everybody, but I'm telling you, there is a different kind of response that God has to the person he's looking for. And it's not always the way we would choose people. In fact, Jesus taught it this way. He said, hey, we need to seek first the kingdom of God. We, we need to seek it first. It's got a different level of priority, a different level of, of coming after God's agenda, God's rule, his priority. It is a different order in our lives. He says, hey, be the kind of person that doesn't just know about the kingdom or seek the kingdom. Be the kind of person that seeks the kingdom above other things. Seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. And now I want to bring you back. Now we get to King Asa, right? The king of Judah. What had happened? Well, in the past, he had come, all these enemies had come against him. The, the Bible says that the, the Ethiopians had come, right, and, uh, and, and come against him. The Libyans had come. And at that moment, he didn't know what to do, but he cried out to God. And, and he said, you know what? We're going to respond. And God backed him up. God backed him up, but now this time, another time he's invaded and he wavers in his faith and he quickly goes to natural things and natural solutions and he quickly kind of turns to the things of this world and now the prophet comes and tells him, hey, 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 listen, I, what I'm looking for is actually wholehearted commitment. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are committed to him, fully committed to him. Some translations say wholly committed. Some just say committed. Some say fully or completely his. This word means whole. It means undivided, right? We have a, a scissor cut curry rice right below our block. Thank God for scissor cut curry rice. Uh, any, any fans of scissor cut curry rice in the house? I, by the way, I want to apologize for telling everyone about the gamba mien. And not, not reminding you all that it's closed on Sundays. I know there was a lot of uh, anger in Region 7, 8 that day. Uh, and uh, I, my kids even, let's go get it. I told them, I think it's closed. No, it's not. I think it's closed. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've done this before. And I should have warned you. So I'm, I'm confident, though, you can find a scissor cut curry rice that's open in Singapore. But, you know, my scissor cut curry, it tastes great. And you'll see these huge pieces of chicken. It's amazing. It's like, man, I can't wait to have this. This big chicken, you're going to get those scissors. Pop, pop, pop. I don't know why it's better when you cut it with scissors, but it is. Pour the curry on it. It's going to be incredible. But an amazing thing happens at the scissor cut curry rice. They grab the chicken, and you're like, this is so good. And sometimes, you know, you're looking at the different pieces, and in your heart, you're like, please pick that one. Like, I hope, I hope they grab that one, and then they do. It's bigger. It's like shiny. It looks like it just came out of the oven. It's like twice the size of the other ones. You're so excited. And then the guy starts cutting. He goes, cut, pa, pa, pa. And you're like, this is it, man. I can feel the anointing. And then he cuts one more time, pa. And then he puts the rest back on the shelf. Wait, wait, wait. What, what is going on? I had a, there was a whole piece of chicken. 
but I didn't get the whole piece. He cut it, he divided it, and he, he left the other part for somebody else. That's not right. That's not fair. But you know, sometimes spiritually, we can do that with our heart. And I go, God, I want to give you my heart, but then it gets a little divided. I give you my heart most of the way, but part of my heart is going to belong to this. Part of my heart is going to be in these interests and pursuit. Part of, these heart, part of my heart is going to be maybe a little bit self-focused. Part of my heart is just going to be reserved for my ambitions and my career. Part of my heart, you know, reserved for my priorities. And, I, and then I, I, I reserve a little bit, and God says, no, I'm looking for an undivided heart. The, the whole thing, in other words, not pulled in two different directions. I don't want to be pulled in two directions. You want God to show up in your life today? Let me tell you, be someone whose whole heart belongs to him, whose whole life belongs to him, who I've given everything to God, and I'm not going back. And I think, like Asa, a lot of us have the same struggle. Sometimes it's easier to do that the first time than the second time, or the third, or the fourth, or the fifth. You're sitting in this place because everybody's come to a point, I would assume, where most of us have come and said, God, you can have my heart. Our issue is the second time. The first crisis, Asa turned completely to God. But in the second time, man, it was a little harder. Lord, I don't know if I have faith to believe you for that. God, I don't know. There's a lot of things at stake here. Lord, I, I'm not sure. Are you going to come through for me? I don't know if I have the, the strength to go through this. And sometimes the second or third time is a little bit difficult. But God's looking for those of us that have given our complete heart to God, that he is in the highest place. Are you with me today? Come on, the ultimate authority. He has all the priority, and our attention is on him. That is the person that God's looking for. And, and I want to I give you three qualities of this kind of person today that, that you would understand this. Because I believe if we could catch this, listen, if we could put this to practice in our life, you would start to see God move in your life like never before. He says that his eyes are constantly looking to show himself strong on behalf of this kind of person. To do miracles, to bring breakthroughs, to draw near, to give grace, to grant his presence, to let his voice be heard. God is just looking for moments that he can show up for this kind of person. So what is this kind of person? Well, first of all, listen, it's not a person that's living in shame or guilt, but it is a person living a new life. A person living a new life. Everyone say new. new. A lot of times I think when we think about giving God my whole heart, we have an idea like it's a little bit oppressive. Like, oh, I got to just be sorry all the time. I got to be depressed all the time. It's so difficult. It's so hard. God's trying to take from me and I'm never good enough. And that is not what God is talking about. God saved and redeemed us because he loves us. Are you with me? Because we're valuable to God. He valued your life. He's not trying to take from you. In fact, God always gives to us. He gave us Jesus. Gives us forgiveness. Gives us purpose. Gives us new life. God's not trying to take from me. And if I think I'm just going to walk around guilty and shameful and depressed all the time, that, I'm not understanding what God is really after. He actually wants me to be living a brand new life in him. That's what it looks like for my heart to completely belong to him. Right. Romans 6, 4 says this. This is good for all the baptism people today. Listen, for we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Are you with me today? For we died, and, and the baptism was a sign of my, me being buried, my old life going, and now I am living a brand new life. Yeah. That water is not going to change me, but the life of Christ inside of me makes everything new. Yeah. It makes everything new. And, and no matter when that was for you, or maybe not yet, if you haven't been baptized yet, make the decision. Take the plunge. Go grab a towel and jump in today. Baptize yourself for all I care. But listen, the important thing is that I live the new life that Christ started inside of me. That I, can, that, that I don't just come to church but live in my old way. Listen, thinking my old thoughts, struggling my old struggles, reacting with my old reactions, but I actually live this new life. 
That is what God is doing inside of me. In other words, the Christian life is not the same old me trying to be better. That's not the Christian life. The Christian life is, you know what? I died and was buried, and God gave me a brand new life, and I'm letting the new life come out. That inside of me, the Holy Spirit is producing new desires, and I'm letting those desires win. The Holy Spirit is putting within me new dreams and visions, and those are the ones that I'm pursuing. The Holy Spirit is giving me new direction, and I'm following that direction. He's doing a new work inside of me. So you need to stop being consumed with worrying about your old life or going back to your old life, but the real thing God is looking for is people that would walk in the newness of life. And as I let those new things come out of me day after day after day, God is transforming me to be more like Jesus. Convictions, priorities, passions, desires. It is not a person living in Shemergil, but living that new life. Asa had had broken through. He had set a new level of faith and a new priority. And the problem was he went back to old things. And God was like, why didn't you stay at that level? Why didn't you keep going and trusting me? You trusted me once. Why aren't you trusting me today? Asa, live the new life. Live the new way. Live the life of faith. Don't go back. That's the person that God is looking for. Today, I think we need a purpose in our heart. You know what? Today, I want to live the new life that Christ has given me. When you go to scissor cut rice and he only gives you half the chicken, say, you know what? Jesus loves you. And I would like to buy that other half of chicken, please. (laughs) Yes, I'm going to pay double what I thought I was going to pay so that I can have the whole chicken because God wants an undivided chicken, all right? Whatever it takes, when someone cuts you off in the road, let the new life come out of you. When someone at your work offends you and bad mounts you to the bottom, you can react different ways, but you've got a choice. You know what, God? I'm letting the new me come out. The new life is going to come out of me. Somebody say amen. amen. Second, not a person, listen, of great talent but a person of great commitment. Who's God looking for? Not someone living in guilt or shame, but living a new life. But secondly, it's, he's not looking for a person of great talent, thank God. He's looking for a person of great commitment. A person of great commitment. This world values talent and ability and expertise, but God looks on the inside, not the outside. And so that's why God values the heart. He says, I'm looking to show up strong, not for those that preach the best, not for those that know the most, not for those that have the most skill or ability. God knows in my life, I I know for sure. I mean, there are many things I can do, but I've known my whole life. I'm not the most talented. I'm not the most skilled. I'm not the one that knows the most. But I'll tell you what, I have faith in God and I know how to trust him. And God shows up when my heart is committed to him. God is looking for a person of great commitment. He's looking to strengthen those who are committed. Are you with me? He's not looking for those that are strengthened to commit. Did you get it? He he goes, I'm looking to strengthen those whose hearts are committed. In fact, if you read the previous story of Asa, very interesting. They come against him, and he's almost like ready to give up, and he finally just snaps, and he goes, you know what? God's going to do something. We're going to come against you, and he doesn't even know how he's going to do it, and God says, I'm with you. God says, I'm with you. You you trust, you believe, you took a step of faith. I'm with you. When I commit to God, God comes in and strengthens me. That's why the Christian life, it's not a halfway thing. i got to come and say, God, I'm giving you my heart. I trust you. I'm committing to you. I trust you. I'm committing. Some of you have made new commitments this year. You're saying, you know what? I want to serve as a, as a connect group leader. And, and, and God, you know what? God's going to strengthen you. I'm serving as an assistant connect group leader. I'm, I'm serving in the body. I'm a, a zone leader here. I'm getting involved in growth track. And I'm telling you, God wants to come and strengthen you. You will see God move like never before when you step out and you go, I I don't know exactly how it's going to happen. That is the person that God is looking for. And that is the moment you see God's power come in to strengthen. Are you with me today? We we commit first and God backs us up. God, God calls us to faith. He's looking, in other words, he's looking for my yes. He's not looking for me to know everything. But, but he strengthens those whose hearts go out to him and go, God, I don't know how, but I believe you can do it. I don't know how, but I just know you can come through. I know you can do this. I know you can provide. I know you're going to be with me. I know you're worth it. I'm, I'm giving up these things. I'm pushing other things aside, and my heart is committed to you. Are you with me today? 
In fact, I want to I wanna do this. If you're a, a connect group leader, an assistant connect group leader, even the, the new people I see is in the connect groups or a zone leader, lift up your hand. Come on, you're in, involved in connect groups. You're a zone leader. You're some kind of, lift them up high. Keep them up. Keep them up. Come on, way up high. Yeah, come on, clap for them. Some of you are one-handed clapping. I get it. Lift, keep it up. Keep it up. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. Come on, if you're someone with their hand raised, just lay your hand on them. Even if your hand's raised, pray for someone else too. God's, God's going to, I believe God's going to strengthen you this year. Even as we jump into these new groups, God's going to do something new in your life today. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we, we pray for each and every one. God, we, we lift up these, these connect group leaders. We lift up the assistant leaders. God, we lift up these new people I see. Father, we pray you would show up in power in their lives. God, to strengthen them. Oh, God, to do things in and through them they never thought possible. Lord, that they've never seen before. In the name of Jesus, we declare a new anointing right now in Jesus' name. God, fresh anointing, a fresh mantle of authority and faith and strength, God, to pastor and lead and break through in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, even as they give of their heart and life to you, God, we thank you. You're going to give your strength to them. God, as they give their time to you, you're going to give your favor and anointing and grace to them. We declare over them right now supernatural favor. Oh, Father, Lord, a year of breakthrough and miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Clap for these leaders. My goodness. In fact, where's the, I want the, where, uh, uh, I want to pray for the regional pastors too. Uh, the regional pastors, in fact, regional staff. Where's all the staff, regional staff? I don't know. They're running around. If you're a regional staff, lift up your hand. Uh, there, there's a bunch of them. I don't know. They're hiding somewhere here. Yeah, lift up your hand. You know who you are. Yeah, lift it up high. Come on. Uh, gr grab them. In fact, just stand. It's just stand. They can't see your hand. Claire, you're too shy. Okay, just stand. Yeah, yeah, stand up, Carmen. You're, you're uh, honorary staff. All right. You're married to a staff. It's like a free. We, we don't pay you, but you're staff. Come on, pray for them. You know, the, these represent uh, couples, leaders, uh, young men and women of God that have fully committed their heart to the Lord. I want to pray for a fresh anointing. God, we thank you right now, Lord, for the commitment, the passion, the yes. Oh, Father, Lord, now we pray, God, for just an, a, a supernatural impartation of your strength and grace and anointing. We declare more, 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 not just more responsibility, not just more, God, leadership, but God, more breakthroughs, more testimonies, more of your grace, more of your blessing, so much more in Jesus' name. God, we thank you. You're coming to strengthen. You're coming to renew. God, you're coming to back them up. God, as they commit their hearts to you. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we bless them right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give them a hand. These guys are amazing. A person of great commit. Come on, everyone say, I'm all in. Come on, say, I'm all in. He strengthens those who are committed. So the question is, am I fighting for my commitment to the world or am I fighting for my commitment to God's kingdom? I'm going to push one way or the other. Am I pushing against God to be committed to the things I want or am I pushing against my flesh to be committed to the things that God wants? A person of great commitment. Being all in means he has my passion. He's got my priorities. He's got my commitment today. Today in baptism, you're going to experience this. Say, God, I'm all in for you. I'm all in for you. I don't know everything. I don't have the most talent. That's okay. That's not what God's looking for. But you give God your heart. God is going to come and strengthen you. If, if Jesus is who he says, then there is no greater priority. That's why Jesus said in Luke 14, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. He's not talking about taking our money. He's not talking about taking our things, but he's saying in our heart, actually, the call of a disciple is to fully go after Jesus and say, God, I'm all in for you. What does it mean to, to say, I'm giving a year of my life on the mission field. I'm, I'm going to plant a church. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to lead someone. I'm going to disciple someone. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to be part of this ministry. I'm going to do, why? Why, why, why? Not for an organization, but because my heart belongs to God. My heart belongs to him. Here's the last one. Who is God looking for? Not a person living in shame or guilt, but a person living a new life. Secondly, not a person of great talent, but a person of great commitment. And lastly, not a person who is perfect, 
but a person who is responsive. A person who is responsive. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro, looking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. Someone that is responsive. In fact, you may make a lot of mistakes in your life. You will. I do all the time. All of us do. You know what God's looking for? Responsiveness. The Bible says God called David a man after his own heart. David, who murdered someone. David, who committed adultery. David, who made so many mistakes. But you know what David was? He was responsive to God. He responded to God. He responded to his voice. He responded to his call. He responded even in repentance and said, God, I'm just responding. I'm not perfect, but I'm responsive. And, and you may feel like maybe even in the midst of this, you go, man, I think I used to be all in. Maybe I'm not. Listen, this is not a message to condemn you. I'm here to tell you what God's looking for was never your perfection, just your responsiveness. And today when we respond to him, he responds to us. When we respond to him, he comes. He's looking for this. Jesus in Luke 5 says he saw a tax collector named Levi and he said, follow me and be my disciple. And so Levi got up and he left everything, and he followed Jesus. He saw a tax collector, worst of the worst in that day, someone so far from God in the eyes of everyone around, but you know what he was? He was responsive. He was responsive, and when we respond, everything changes. God's, God's looking for our undivided hearts. He says, if my people who are called by my name would, would would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their ways. I would hear. I would hear from heaven. I would respond. I would heal their land. What's he looking for? I just want my people to respond to me. They, even when they mess up, even when they go aside, yeah, 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 but if they would really come and just respond, that's all I was ever looking for was people that were all in for me. Not just would they come and attend church. Not just would they sit there or go to a meeting. No, 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 but in their heart, would they really come back and turn to me? That kind of person, I would show myself strong. That kind of person, listen, you're not too far away for God to get to your life today. You're not too far away for God to use you today. You're not too far off from how it used to be or who you wish you were for God to break through in your life. You are one response away. You are one yes away from God showing up strong inside your heart and mind. And if there's one thing we purpose in our heart moving out of this place, it should be not to try to impress God with our perfection, but that every one of us would say, Lord, I'm going to have a heart that is responsive to you. When you speak, I'm just coming after you. Lord, when you stir me, God, I want to say yes to you. Lord, when you challenge me, I want to commit to you. I want to give you my undivided heart so that you can come and strengthen me. I want to be the kind of person that you are looking for. Are you with me today? I want, to, I want to pray today, and I believe there's a moment for all of us to give our heart to the Lord. But before we do that as a church together, I want to speak especially to those that you may be here and you've never invited Jesus into your heart. You're not a Christian today, and by that I mean you might have come to church before or been around, or maybe this is your first time, but you've never made a decision to say, God, I want to give my heart to you, and I want to put my faith in Jesus all the way, that what he did on the cross, he did it for me. God is not looking for your perfection. He's looking for your response. Jesus went to the cross because you and I are not perfect, but he calls us to respond, that when we respond in faith and we say, man, I believe you paid the price for my sin. I believe you can forgive my sin. I, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God, and what you did, you did it for me. When I respond, God comes with his grace, and he comes with his forgiveness, and he comes with that new life that we're talking about. And so if you want that new life, I want to pray for you. If you're here and you want to invite Jesus into your heart, I very simply, I'm going to count to three, and at the count of three, I want you just to lift your hand so I know who I'm praying for. And we're going to pray together, and God is going to do this in your life. So in every location, right now, I want you to close your eyes. Let there be a little bit of privacy today. And at the count of three, I want to ask you to say yes to God and respond. Here we go. One, with every eye closed and no one looking around, this is your moment between you and God today. But he's looking for your heart. Two, with no hesitation and without pushing it off or holding back, I want to ask you to not try to fight against this, but that you would actually say yes to Jesus. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, if that's you, hands up right now. 
Say, that's me. Pray for me. I'm saying yes. I want Jesus in my life. That's right. You just respond. Just slip it up really quickly so I can see and put it down again. We'll see your hand and pray together. God is going to do this work in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling, and all you need to do is respond. Last ones today, very quickly before we move on. In every location, come on, you just respond to the Lord. He's here right now. All right. Then for those that responded today, even if you didn't but you should have, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I'm going to invite you to repeat it after me, but make it your prayer today. God's going to hear you. We'll pray along with you. Right out loud, just say this. Say, Jesus, I know that I need you, and I want you in my life. Will you forgive me for every sin? Wipe my past away and make me a new person. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. You died for me. You rose again. And right now, you're living in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in me. Today, I give my heart to you, and I make you my Lord and Savior. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Can we give God a clap and a shout of praise? Come on. The Bible says if you believe what you pray, God heard your prayer today. Come on. He heard your prayer today, and when you go all in with him, he goes all in with you. God is here. Before you leave, I want you to head to that big blue banner in the, in the location that says next step. We want to help you take the next step in your journey of faith, so don't miss this. We would love to connect with you and give you some resources. For Christians here today, I want to pray.